Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So if you know me or you watch my vlogs then you know I worked at Nordstrom from September to March. So I worked there for a good amount of months to kind of know the system and how Nordstrom works and just the real deal about what it's like to be a Nordstrom employee. Nordstrom is known for being one of the best companies to treat their employees and also just being overall an amazing company to work for so naturally that's why I wanted to work there. Also they are commission based and so I really wanted to learn how that works and maybe try selling products instead of making coffee being a barista like I did for a year. I wanted a change. I learned so much about the company over the months that I worked there and while I was working there a lot of people asked me about it and is it good what it was like so I thought I'd make this video kind of telling the true tea about what it's like to work at Nordstrom and maybe help you if you're deciding on if you want to work there or not. The whole idea of Nordstrom is that you make what you sell. So for example, the department that I worked in was kids wear. Our commission rate was 9%. So if we sold $100 worth of stuff, we would make $9. The tricky part is that you only make commission if you sell more than you make hourly. So it was very hard to do in Seattle. Seattle has one of the highest minimum wages of $15 an hour. Since Nordstrom's a bigger company, we made $15.35, I believe it was, per hour. Depending on how many hours I worked, I had to sell more than the so in an eight hour day at $15.35 an hour, I would make $122.08 before tax. So in order to make commission just to pass my hourly by a little bit, I would have to sell $1,400 that day. So to figure out how I did that, I did 1,400 times 0 0.09 and then you get 126. So minimum, I have to sell $1,400 daily for an eight hour shift to make more than my hourly rate. Kids wear is probably one of the hardest departments to make commission in because it's just just not super busy. Not a lot of parents come to Nordstrom to shop for their kids. A lot of parents think like they're just gonna grow out of it, might as well go somewhere cheaper. And then you do have a lot of parents who do come there. Where you make your money in kids wear is by selling strollers and building up clientele. I had two ladies in my department who had been working there for years and they had a stack of customers who would always come to them. And even when they weren't working, they would say, oh, blank helped me. And then they would still get the commission for it. That's how you make money in kids wear. Making appointments and scheduling people. The only time I made commission at Nordstrom was in the holiday season. Personally, it's hard for me to walk up to someone and ask them like what they need help with and how to make outfits. I've never been one for fashion. I literally don't know how to dress. One of the best things that job gave me was an interest in fashion because now I'm kind of somewhat put together. But other than that, I never really been interested in fashion. So when people would come up to me and be like, hey, I need an outfit for a girl for a baby shower, I'd be like, okay, like let me help you but on the inside I was like okay there's a lot of clothes like you can go find something like it was just personally hard for me to work there another thing about working at Nordstrom is that each department has a different commission rate so overall most departments have a commission rate of 6.75 like the apparel the higher price things BP savvy top shop indie TBD all that all has 6.75 percent rate commission designer handbags and designer boutique salon I believe theirs was 3.5% but I mean it makes sense like a bag is $3,000 so it wouldn't be fair if they had a 9% commission rate also or 10% like shoes has because then they'd be making so much more money and no one would want to work in any other department. They split up the percentages to kind of make it more fair for each department but still there's better departments to work in. That's why you typically start in a lower paced department or not someone's preferable department that way you can really gain your skills and move up when you're ready. Shoes gets 10% commission and kids shoes gets 14.5% commission. Kids shoes has the highest percentage, but it is really hard to sell. Like I remember one day I was having a good day. I sold $2,500 and then I told someone in kids shoes that and they were like, yeah, I had a good day too. I sold $700. But at the same time, they had a 14.5% commission rate. So it kind of evens out. The home department has a 3% commission rate, but they get hourly and commission, not one or the other. Other. and same with makeup and cosmetics so that's really interesting too but at the same time it's really hard to make money on top of your hourly but it is promised if you sell one $50 eyeshadow palette that's 
one dollar and fifty cents that you get so it takes a lot to actually make some money but if you're really good at your job in makeup then you will succeed one thing that you really do have to factor in is returns returns are the worst because they affect you so after Christmas no one really gets commission because they have so many returns on their name and returns can affect you for one year after you sell it so if I sold something in September to someone and then next August they return it it'll still affect me and it'll still look down on my reports every single day your department prints out a list and they'll say how much you sold gross and then how much you sold net and then your returns so your net is what focuses on so it'll take your returns minus your gross and that gets your net and those are the numbers that affect your paycheck so one day I can sell three thousand dollars and have no returns and it'd be a really good day but then the next day I could sell a thousand dollars and then have five hundred dollars in returns so basically I only sold five hundred dollars that day so it's really a toss-up you have good days and then you have bad days and since Nordstrom returns anything at any time it's really unpredictable what your returns can look like they give their employees 20% off which isn't the best but it's still something the discount works at all of their food places you can use it online and also works at the e-bar which is super nice when you eat your caffeine in the morning the reason why I say it's not the best is because here in Seattle we have a 10% tax so when you factor in that half of my discount is just taking off the tax 10% really isn't much so basically if something's $50 I pretty much spend 48 so it's literally just tax and a few dollars so it's not bad but it could be worse you know like at least it's something you can't use a personal credit card for working at Nordstrom a lot of people still do it anyways but if you do it a lot I heard you can get in trouble so I never used a personal credit card I opened up a Nordstrom card I also have a Nordstrom debit card but I don't really use that I mainly use my Nordstrom credit card as employees you only get two points per dollar whereas when you are like just a regular customer not an employee you also get two points per dollar but there's also these events where you can get triple points which is six points per dollar a few weekends throughout the year and also you get a personal triple points day and you get a personal 10 point day around the holidays and you also get alterations benefit as an employee you don't get that you only get two points per dollar and you still have to wait till you get to 2,000 points to transfer it in for a $20 note so basically the rewards kind of suck <laughs> The rewards for an employee kind of takes a hit because you basically have to spend a thousand dollars to get twenty dollars off. So you might as well get rewarded for the money you're going to spend anyways at Nordstrom, but it kind of makes you not want to buy it. But you are still going to buy things because you're surrounded by it all the time. Hopefully that makes sense. Like I, I almost didn't get the Nordstrom credit card, but then I did because I would just have to use my debit card anyway. So it's like might as well get some type of points. One thing that Nordstrom does do for its employees though is during the holidays there's a week where we get 30% off of all merchandise so even makeup and designer and everything we get 30% off and then there's uh, a few weeks throughout the year where Nordstrom brands are 40% off there's a really big list of them and if that brand is on the list at Nordstrom or at Nordstrom Rack then we got 40% off so during that week and then the week where we got 30% off I went to Oregon because they have no tax so I really utilized that 30% 40% and got a lot more money off. That's how I got a lot of the clothes from my first haul video on YouTube and then a lot of other things. It's like a two and a half hour drive from my house but it's worth it when you think about all the money that I saved and a lot of that money did go to food and gas and hotel but at the same time I made a memory out of it and went to a different Nordstrom so that's always fun. I always like to say life is about experiences not about the money. My manager was awesome and a lot of the managers at Nordstrom are. He always was super flexible with scheduling. I think the only time he didn't let me have a specific day off was because I requested the week before and the schedule was already out and I didn't know it was out already. So that's the only reason why. So that's really understandable, you know, but every other time let me have any day I wanted off within reason, obviously. My friend randomly invited me to go to Hawaii that weekend and I was like, you know what? I want to go. And so I told my manager, I worked all four days that we were supposed to be gone, but he worked it out so that I could have all of those days off right off the bat. Like how awesome is that? best manager and he was always making sure that I knew what I was doing he never let me sell if I wasn't feeling confident and he was always giving me tips to sell more so that I can make more we were allowed two 15 minute breaks and then we took an hour lunch personally I don't like taking breaks or hour long lunches because if I'm at work I want to be working I want to be on the clock so that I can go home as soon as possible so it made my days really long taking
taking the hour lunch. That's honestly one of the biggest reasons why I left because an eight hour shift turns into a nine hour shift basically. It's like I'd rather spend that hour at home than being at work sitting in a break room eating lunch. Plus I worked at the downtown Seattle location and I live 45 minutes away from the Nordstrom downtown and I would have to leave early because traffic in Seattle is pretty bad now. Thankfully I got dropped off but if I didn't get dropped off I'd have to take the light rail and that would add even more time sometimes even an hour and a half so an eight hour shift is really a nine hour shift and then it's really an 11 hour day sometimes even 12 because you have to amount for the traveling time there and back and that's literally half of your day and I just wasn't down for that and that's a big reason as to why I left too they have really good health benefits I'm still under 26 so I get my mom's health benefits still but for the people who weren't it's one of the best it, they offer a really good pack they also do 401k they have a really good 401k package I believe it's either it's like 4% or dollar for dollar I know that's a big difference but it's one of the two but every single person that was helping me during the new hire training was telling me that it was one of the best packages the kids wear department where I work everyone was a family I literally made some of the best friends that I have to this day working there everyone was super nice and helpful since that was a thing we always looked out for each other and if we saw someone helping someone else we wouldn't steal each other's sales we would type in their employee number and ring it up for them we were always doing things to help each other like we were a supportive team but I heard a lot of other teams weren't like that for example shoes is really competitive because it's so busy all the time I don't know if you've noticed but in a lot of Nordstrom's shoes and cosmetics will be on the first floor because that's something that people gravitate towards instantly and so they have some of the best people working in those departments a lot of people don't have integrity which is something they should have they'll see an associate helping someone and then ring them up so the associate can go do something else but then put their number in so all that work that that associate did will go on to the other person's work and that's money how are you going to play around with someone's money like that I I just don't understand why people do that but it, it gets really competitive out there in a lot of other departments too I mean what's the point of work to make money so I understand but I don't understand why you have to steal someone else's work like take credit for it that's not cool and not fair you can actually get in trouble for that but a lot of people are too scared to say something so they end up just not saying something I would say prop shoes is the best department to work in because they have a 10% commission rate and it's so easy to sell a lot of shoes it is a lot of hard work though because you have to be back and forth with your customer going to the back room grabbing shoes and the stock room is huge like huge there's so many shoes back there you do get a lot of returns as well but at the same time it's easy to sell for example I bought a pair of boots and my Ugg slippers that I always wear and the total was 237 and I knew what I wanted to do my size knew everything just quickly wanted to try them on and it took me maybe 10 minutes working with this associate 10 minutes of his day got him $23 there are 60 minutes in an hour so not every customer is going to be like me knowing their size and knowing exactly what they want but say you did have 10 customers like that in an hour and if they bought $237 worth of stuff in one hour you can make $138 so shoes is a really good department to be in I really wanted to move up to shoes out of kids wear because I, I didn't feel confident enough selling apparel and it was really hard for me and I wasn't making any money I know more about shoes than I do clothes like I said I'm not a fashion person that much so my manager told me I had to work really hard and basically be one of the top people in this department so that the shoes meant Manager would want me and also our store manager had to approve that transition I would say I was about the bottom middle of our pack our staff was about 10 people I think some somewhere around then I already had doubts of me staying with the company but I thought maybe if I can get to shoes maybe I'll like it a lot more so I tried really hard to sell and it was during the down season two like right after Christmas it was late February early March and it was just too hard for me to sell like every single day I was just thinking about how I miss making coffee, how I miss being a barista, coming home with cash tips every day, a guarantee that I was making tips. And so after a week of me trying really hard, like 
genuinely trying. I just didn't see myself moving forward or selling more. So I decided to put in my two weeks to my manager. I was really bummed about it because I love working at Nordstrom, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm trying to work to make money. So I might as well be somewhere where I can make the most amount of money. So here are my overall thoughts on working at Nordstrom. If you can sell, if you are confident in selling, do it. Definitely do it. I'm not confident in selling, so that's why it didn't work out for me. But if you think you can sell, why not give it a shot? One more thing is that since I live in Seattle, I don't know if all cities are like this, but they do transit subsidies. The light rail is a really popular method of how people get to work in Seattle. And so they, after six months of employment, they offer you a transit subsidy of $100. So they'll give you $100 to travel to and from work. I don't know of many more companies that would do that for their employees. Like I said earlier, in my opinion, shoes is the best department to work in. So if you can get shoes or something that you are really confident in selling. I had a coworker who would make commission nine checks out of 10 because she was good at what she did in kids wear. You have to be down to work long hours and nights. Uh, sometimes my store closed at nine and I wouldn't get out of there until 9.45, sometimes even 10. And I think the longest I, would, uh, I was ever there was 11 during the holiday season. Oh, my tapestry fell. Your shifts aren't guaranteed eight hours. That was a bummer to me because at the time I was only doing school part-time, so I wanted to be able to work more since I wasn't doing so much school. But sometimes I literally have a four hour shift. I'd have to drive 45 minutes, stay for four hours, and then drive 45 minutes home, and it wasn't worth it to me. But if you live close to the location, it only takes you like 10 minutes to walk there. That might be worth it for you. So living closer to the location definitely helps. If you aren't sure if you want to commit to having a job at Nordstrom, there's always the anniversary sale and there's always a holiday season where they hire support staff that you could definitely test the waters at. That's definitely what I recommend, honestly, if you aren't, sh if you're still on the fence. Personally, I feel like I'm not good enough to sell during the off seasons where it's not so busy, but I really feel confident in my ability to sell during the holiday season and during the anniversary sale. That's what I plan on doing. I plan on working during this holiday season just so I can also get that 30% off discount in one or two kind of sentences. Do I think you should work for Nordstrom? Yes. If you are confident in yourself to sell. Would I recommend it? Yes. I loved working for the company. It's just personally I wasn't confident enough in myself to receive all the benefits from working there. So really it was personal preference. Nordstrom is great. I just wasn't cut out for it. So I hope this video really helped open your eyes about what it's actually like working at Nordstrom. If you still have questions, please let me know. Leave a comment and I will answer them all. Also so thumbs up this video if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe because I'm always putting out videos. Tap that notification bell twice to be sure to see when I post. And that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.